Hi crafters, how are you all today? Um, I've been meaning to make this video for quite a few years now um, and with on stage coming up in the next couple of days I thought now was the perfect time to do it. Um, I want to show you how I made these beautiful um, coasters. So This is the one that I made originally a few years ago. Um, as you can see they're just a plain uh, kitchen bathroom tile that you can pick up at Bunnings or if you're out of state any of your hardware stores um, and this is what I did or what I'm doing for on stage um, I'm going down to Sydney uh, for Stamping Up's convention this weekend coming so this is my swap for convention um, so like I said a few years ago I made um, the one with the swallowtail and I had lots and lots and lots of people ask me how I actually came to make it and I promised that I would do a video one day and I guess today is one day. Um, so I know that there are a lot of these tutorials um, on YouTube and Pinterest and online but I found that none of them were heat resistant. None of them could actually allow you to put a hot cup of tea onto your coaster without leaving a ring or getting it stuck to it or anything like that. So after a few trial and error, I managed to find um, some uh, right sprays to put on, some varnishes that are actually keeping it covered. And as you can see, this one, if I get it in the light, you can see there's very few marks on it. And this is probably three years old now. Um, and we actually use these... Um, they get used every day in my craft room. I have them um, for classes and everything. So they've had numerous hot coffees, teas, spills, all sorts of things on them. Um, and they're still looking as good as new. So um, we'll move these out the way and we'll get started. So like I said, all you really need is a kitchen tile. Um, so these, I think, were 50 cents each from Bunnings. They're just a plain white tile, um, nothing on it, very plain, um, no texture, no mark, just the shiny gloss ones that you can pick up. Um, and you just need to give it a bit of a clean first. So make sure you've cleaned it all off, no dust, no dirt or anything on it, and the surface is all nice and clean. Now, to make the patterned background, you actually need to grab yourself some Sharpies. So I picked up um, an assortment pack from, oh, I think it might have been Big W or Office Works or something a little while ago. Came in all these different colours. I think I got about 30 altogether. Now, when you're choosing your colours, um, some colours will work and some won't. And it's a matter of trial and error of having a play, at putting them on, seeing what colours blend together, see what ones don't. I know for a fact red is awful. Don't bother trying red with anything. It just turns everything to mud. Um, I have found that some of the purples are really good. The pinks are really good. Um, the richer shades are better, so the greens are better and the blues. Not so much the, pa the paler colours. They don't seem to blend as well. Um, but like I said, completely trial and error. Um, and if you do mess up um, and it doesn't work for whatever reason, then I've got a, a way of getting them clean again as well. So don't panic about it. All right, so what we might do is we might actually start with um, these three colours. So I've got a purple, um, a pale pink and sort of a deep pinky reddy colour. Um, and all you're going to do is just colour your tile. Now, I actually like to start with a lighter colour first and... Like I said, it's a pretty easy job, this. There's just a few tips and tricks from having made so many of them. I mean, this must be, what, my 110th or something. Now, I find going round in a circle is the best way to go. If you go up and down, up and down, for some reason, it doesn't seem to blend as well. I don't know whether it's because the colour's a bit thinner or whether it's um, the time it takes. I'm not 100% sure, but I found going round in circles is the great way to go. So you're just going to put some big spots wherever you want. Now obviously depending on which colour you want to have the most of, whether you want it to be lighter or darker, depends on how much of each one you put on. So now I'm going to do the purple as well. Like I said, nice and round and round. Now you don't have to fill in all the gaps, so you don't have to get really close up to each other. Um, so you don't have to blend the colours that way. You're just going to put some spots of colour all over, all round. Um, like I said, I'll show you a few that are finished later and show you a few um, colour ideas just so you can see how they go. Uh, I'm going to put, I might put some more down here, like that. And like I said, you can have as many or as little as you want. 
Um, and I'm going to finish off with this sort of dark maroney um, pink, which is a really beautiful colour. You can always go back and add more. You can keep adding until really you seal them. So if you put all these colours on and you blend them all together and they turn into horrible muddy patches, you can just wipe them off and start again. There's not any reason why you can't reuse your tiles until you get a really nice finish. I'm going to join some of these up, I think. Make this one a bit more pink. A little bit more over here. A little bit more up here. That might be a patch down here, touch up there. Okay, that'll do us. All right, so I'll bring it up for you to have a look. Now, you want to be fairly quick. You don't want it to set too much, like the colours to dry too, out, too much. So you want to make it a fairly quick colouring. Next, you want to do is you want to get some um, rubbing alcohol. So this I just got from the chemist. Um, it's only a couple of dollars. Doesn't It's not very expensive. Um, like I said, I got mine from the chemist, but I think you can buy them from Coles or from Woolies and all your supermarkets. And the other thing you want to get... You want to put your rubbing alcohol in a little cup. So I've got a little egg cup here. And you want to get yourself a little syringe. Oh, where's the camera? Here you go. So I just stole this, actually, this little syringe um, from the kids' medicine cupboard. Anyone who's got kids knows that when you buy your Nurofen and your Panadol, you get heaps and heaps of heaps of these in there. So you want to get yourself a little syringe. And all you're going to do is you're just going to suck up some of the rubbing alcohol, tap it off. Now, when you put your drops on, you don't want big splats, but you don't want teeny tiny drops either. You kind of want a decent size puddle and you're just going to drop them. I like to drop them in between where the colours meet to start with. So I try and do this without getting my head in the way. So I'm just going to put little dots, little dots, little dots, little dots, little dots all over the colours. And what happens is the rubbing alcohol actually makes the colours bleed and blend. And you'll start to see that moving in a minute. And they gradually blend little dots, little dots. Now I'm just putting a few in the middle of the colours that haven't been touched. Don't forget your edges. Little more here. Little more there. Like I said, you want a few, but you don't want too many. You don't want too much. Too much of a good thing, as they say. So that will now start to blend and move and marble into each other. And gradually it will dry and make this whole new colour base. So if I'm really careful and pick this up. Oh, I'm obviously blurring it a little bit. You can see them moving into each other. So I'm going to put that back down. So the actual process of making these tiles is a bit long-winded because what you need to do now is wait for that to be completely dry. You do not want to stamp on your wet tiles because all that happens is when you push your stamp down um, and lift it up, your stamp will be covered in, sta in um, Sharpie and you'll have a big pattern missing off your, off your tile. So you want to leave it um, depending on how much um, rubbing alcohol you've put on it, I usually leave them overnight and come back and do the next bit the next day. If you do it in the morning, probably leave it until that later on that evening and they'll be dry. So you want to make sure that they are completely dry um, before you stamp onto them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this little dude over here out the way and he can dry, start drying off. And I'll bring in another tile. Now this tile is one that I did earlier. Um, this one's a different colour. Let me show you. So I've used the light green, the same purple, um, and I also used a light pink. Oh, a light pink for this one. So these colours are what made this tile. And as you can see, every time they come out different. You could use these three colours on 20 tiles and every one will look different depending on how much of each colour you've used, how much alcohol you've used, how well it's spread, all sorts of different things. So when you have your tile, and this one's nice and dry, um, you can now do your stamping. Please do not try and dry it with an air gun, a heat gun, 
um, a hairdryer, anything like that. Because all you will do is you will blend all those colours um, into a big splotchy mess um, and they won't blend nicely. So don't do that. Just leave them to dry naturally. All right. So the stamp that I'm using with ours is um, the detailed Dragonfly or Dragonfly Dream, should I say, stamp set. And I'm using this detailed one here. You really can use any um, stamp, but I wanted ones that gave a really good silhouette. So the Swallowtail previously, I loved. There was a lot of black spots with chance of colour to come through. Um, and the same with this Dragonfly. So we're going to use this big Dragonfly. Here he is. Look how dirty he is now after being stays on so much. Now, I know a lot of people tell you you can't use stays on on your polymer. Um, you can use stays on. You just can't use the stays on cleaner which is why my dragonfly is so disgustingly black. He's also covered in glitter, can you believe it? It's obviously been used for something else. Now, you could just use a block and stamp them down in your stays on wherever you want him to go, um, but these tiles are slippery. They're obviously a shiny gloss, so they're super, super slippery, um, which means when you stamp them down, you have to put enough pressure on everywhere to leave a really good impression, um, but they tend to slide and slip, and then you end up with a bit of a blurred, um, blurred-looking dragonfly. Um, or what can happen is you can pull off your dragonfly and you've taken some of the um, some of the Sharpie with you. So I find the best thing to use um, is a form of... Um, all the rage now which are all these misties this is actually a stamp master this one um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that when I see the new stamping up catalogue on Saturday it will have a stamping tool like this oh please the stamping gods let there be one because they're honestly amazing especially for something like this um, so what we're going to do and um, for those who haven't seen um, uh, a Misty or the Stamp Master or one of these machines before, um, what they actually do is they originally come with some little magnets which hold your card in place. You place your um, stamp where you want it to ink, uh, sorry, where you want to stamp it. You then close your case, your cover, and when you lift it up, the stamp will be stuck exactly where it wanted to go and then you can stamp it down every time in the same place so it makes it absolutely fantastic when you're stamping sentiments there's nothing worse than stamping a sentiment lifting it up and you've missed a patch with this all you do is just re-ink the stamp again push it down stamp it down lift it up and it will be in exactly the same place as it was every time it never moves so we're going to use that idea to stamp on our tiles to stop all that sliding around so I'm going to snudge that tile in there nice and tight I'm going to lay on my stamp where I want it to go which is probably about there I'm going to close the door I'm going to push down and see how it's now stuck to the door Ta -da! how clever is that so I'm just going to push it on make sure it's on nice and tight now I'm going to use my stays on because it's in the name it stays on just the jet black and what I'm going to do is give my stamp a really good ink up now if you accidentally put a bit of stays on on your plastic the rubbing alcohol that you've used to blend um, your sharpies with will actually take it off you can rub it on leave it on to sweat see I've got a little bit here leave it on there to soak in and it will just pop off and um, you won't have black stays on anymore all right so I'm hoping that's nice and inked so all I'm going to do is make that sure that's nice and snug in there. I'm just going to close my little door. I'm going to give it a really good push down all over. Push, 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 push. And then we'll lift it up and ta-da! I have a fantastic dragonfly. Look at that. How pretty is that? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to actually reposition the dragonfly stamp because I'd want another one up here. But I obviously can't stick that down on there just yet because it's still got stays on so I'm going to give that a quick clean clean it off with our cleaner so that most of the inks come off so let's get the spray sprayed on try not to wobble you guys too much give it a bit of a rub see a little practice see if it's come off yep looks clean enough okay so we're going to do the exact same thing again oh 
we're going to line him up where we want him to go let's say about there we're going to close our door and stick him down push him down over here so that he's there we go, let me move it over so you can see so he's all down where we want him to be ink him up again now if you were going to do a whole heap of these like i did for um on stage i mean i think this is i think i've made 30 or 40 of these so far what you would do is you would stamp them all this side and then you would move your stamp into the second position and then stamp them all again um, the second time around so you'd make sure you do them in big batches otherwise you'd be flipping it back and forth and it would drive you crazy um, so all I'm going to do is close him up again push him down nice and hard see how he's sitting there push 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 and then we're going to lift him up oh and now that's perfect I'm glad he did that so look can you see how he's really patchy here and here no worries this is exactly what the stamp master or the misty are good for all you're going to do is you're just going to re-stamp him again re-ink him up make sure you get all those patches that you must have missed make sure that's back flush in that corner i'm going to close him again give him a really good push down this time and he will re-stamp in exactly the same place as he did last time there you go look at that perfect fantastic all right, so I'm going to move him out of the way. I'll stick him back on my mist on my stamping mat. Move my little misty out of the way, my stamp master. And there you go. That's your tile all decorated. Now, like I said, a lot of the other people would put Mod Podge on, um, cover it in acrylic, lots of sorts of things like that. But I found not one of them um, actually keeps them heat resistant, which at the end of the day is what you want your coaster to be. So I have found the special mix. If you go to, I got mine from Bunnings, but I'm guessing you can probably get them in lots of places. Um, White Knight's Crystal Clear Acrylic in Satin. So that says Satin there. This is what you will now spray your Dragonfly in. You'll need to give this a really good shake. Take it outside in a well-ventilated area. I actually use an old stamping up box. One of those big brown boxes good for after you've got all the goodies out of them. This is exactly what they're useful for. Um, and I will give it a good spray with this. Now a nice even spray backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards one way. And then I go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards the other way. And then what you want to do is you want to leave that to dry for a good, I don't know, half a day. Give it a really good dry. Make sure you're leaving it somewhere well ventilated because this stuff stinks and will give you a headache. Um, but secondly, that there's no dog, cat hair, dust, fluff, anything like that that can sit in it um, and get stuck to it because then you would be left with this awful flicky all over the top, which is no fun for anyone. So give that a nice even spray, leave it a good six to eight hours um, and that will leave it really nice, give it a really nice satin finish. Um, and the other thing that tends to happen is it blends your colours more. It marbles the colours. So if you've got some that haven't marbled as well as you'd like, they're a little bit patchy or they look like they've got, you can see the lines in them where you've coloured. Um, with this being wet, this seems to just make it stand out really bright and bold and vivid, um, but seems to blend those colours a bit better. Um, so you do that first, give it a long time to dry. Then this is the important one. So the white knight seems to set it all into place. Now this is what will actually make it heat resistant. Now I've got uh, Cabot's uh, polyurethane here. Um, I've used the British Paints polyurethane before, um, but polyurethane is what you need to use. Um, this is a gloss because I want to make them hot, um, nice and shiny. So this is a clear gloss. Yet again, I got this um, just at Bunnings in the um, wax section, you know, the floor, the wood section. Um, and you do the same again, well ventilated area, give it a really nice even spray backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Now this has um, like a wide um, spray nozzle, so it doesn't spray a single spray, it seems to spray like a, 
like a big wedge of spray so i find going backwards and forwards you then it's like a bit like a paintbrush you seem to be spraying the paint backwards and forwards backwards and forwards i did some the other day where i sprayed up and down which was the like the thin angle um and it's bubbled and pulled all over the place so don't do it that way girls go backwards and forwards backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and leave that for a good day um to be honest you could probably leave it for a day um and it would be touch dry but to make it really hardened, leave it a couple of days before you actually go to put anything on it. Just put it out the side, um, over to one side, leave it to really cure for a couple of days. And then they really are nice and hard. So I will take this outside and give it a spray later on um, and give them a couple of days and then they should be nice and nice and hard. And then all you need to do is buy, get some little foam or some little rubber feet to put on the back. And that's it. That is your tile done. I'll bring in this one again so this is the one that's all finished and you see how nice and shiny they are um, and they come up beautiful I don't know if I can get nice and close there and like I said they come up different every single time um, I'll show you a few other colors so this one was made um, with these three colors so this one was these three colors um, and then this one was these three colors there you go okay and I'll show you a couple more so I've also got this one which is you can't really see it in the bag these are purple and blues so I used um, a blue I don't know if I've got the blue with me no I probably haven't I used a purple um, oh, I'm dropping them all now so I used a a pink a purple a darker purple um, and the light purple and I'm pretty sure there's a blue in there as well so that's that was those so like I said you don't just have to use three colors you can use four five six seven eight however many you fancy um, another one was a pretty much all pink one so that one's that one there all pink so these two are bagged up and these will be bagged up eventually because these are the ones that are my swaps for on stage um, and last one I had a little go at making a whole heap of different colours. So I've got yellows and greens and blues and pinks and purples in that one. Um, and as you can see, there's the dragonfly and they've come up different every time. So there you go, guys. There's the um, the coaster effect for all those who have been nagging me forever. I finally got round to doing it for you girls. Um, I hope you have fun making them yourself. Like I said, the color combinations are completely out of this world. You, there are so many you can do, even if you just had three colors and just keep making them, keep making, they honestly will come out different every time. Um, oh, and that was going to say my top tip. So if you do one that comes out wrong and it turns out after it's dried for 12 hours and it looks muddy and horrible, all you need to do is pour on some alcohol, rubbing alcohol on it, give it a couple of seconds, Get a kitchen cloth, like a kitchen towel, kitchen roll or something, and just rub it all over and all that colour will just come off. So if you've got a colour that you don't like, remember you can clean it off before you put the stays on. Once the stays on goes on, it obviously stays on, which means it won't come off. And once you varnish them, they don't come off again. That's the idea of the varnish. So if you have a muddy one that you don't like, you can you can clean it off with some rubbing alcohol and it will come off in no time at all okay guys thank you so much for joining me today um any questions give me a shout i'll be more than happy to help with um any queries that you've got have a lovely day happy crafting bye bye